Hello everyone, welcome back to the Intelligent Investor book series authored by Benjamin Graham. In this video, let's take a quick walkthrough of chapter 14 on stock selection for the defensive investor. This is quite a very important chapter for defensive investors where Graham describes the most popular 7 criteria for defensive investment and also the strategy that has become the now common concept of index funds. In continuation of what he mentioned in chapter 5, he emphasizes again that even defensive portfolios need to be churned occasionally ending on a tongue-in-cheek note on paying taxes than losing gains. Finally, he concludes with the difference in prediction and production of stocks. In this chapter, Graham discusses various types of investing organizations like industrial companies, public utilities, financial companies and railroad sector and how his seven rules are applicable to them, in which he mentions public utilities are more likely to clear the defensive criteria whereas he has had his own reservations towards railroads and with regard to financial enterprises he reserves his comment as he claims it wasn't his domain. These seven golden rules help an investor to understand a particular stock and select value stocks which are based on an in-depth study of company fundamentals. Now on to the popular seven rules in which first five are qualitative assessments and the last two are quantitative which has now become the famous Graham number. So the first one is about the size of the company. Find out if the company has more than 100 million dollars of annual sales. Now inflation adjusted it has to be about 500 million dollars. For India one may consider about 250 crores. Second one is about the financial condition of the company. Check if the current assets are at least twice its current liabilities and also that long term debt doesn't exceed the net current assets. Third one is about the stability. See if there are some earnings for the common stock in each of the past 10 years. Fourth is about the dividend record. Know if the company has paid uninterrupted dividend payments for, the, for at least past 20 years. Fifth is about the growth. Get to know if there is a minimum increase of at least one third per share earnings in the past 10 years using 3 years average. Sixth one is about the quantitative one that is the price to earnings ratio. Calculate past 3 years average earnings and check if the current price is not more than 15 times of it. The last one is price to assets ratio. Check if the current price is not more than 1.5 times the book value. Basically these criteria helps us to shortlist the defensive stocks. This also ensures the company has satisfactory past records in terms of growth and stability. Graham has applied the above rules on DJIA stocks as shown in this table and interestingly only 5 of them cleared most of the criteria of defensive stocks which happens to be American Can, AT&T, Anaconda, Swift and Woolworth. If one has to do it by themselves it might be a bit tedious. So these days standard templates are available online or still easier number of portals give all the data in a click which we will see shortly. Regarding public utilities, Graham mentions all his rules are applicable with a slight change in couple of rules. First one on adequate size where the total assets should be more than 50 million dollars. Adjusting inflation now it should be around 250 million dollars. And with regard to the second rule to fin on financial condition, debt should not exceed twice its stock equity. Next big sector that Graham discusses is railroads with particular focus on Penn Central which used to be the 6th largest firm in the US with 120 years of continuous dividend history but actually went bankrupt after the merger. He has discussed the reasons in detail in chapter 17. So if one has to consider railroads now, the list is a bit long just to name a couple of them Burlington and Union Pacific. Graham concludes that there is no mandate for defensive investors to have railroads in their portfolio but extends to say airline industries are having similar such stories after all history repeats in a different fashion so be cautious. Graham also discusses about one other important sector which is financial companies. In this case the last two quantitative ratios price to earning and price to book ratio are used to evaluate the actual value of the stock but Graham cautions that this is not his forte. In this table we could see the comparison between industries, railroads and utility ratios and interestingly during 
1948 to 70, almost all of them have had a similar trend and also shows that there was ample possibilities of profit if one had invested during that period. Next, Graham talks about selectivity. Because given the set of rules, all the investors should come out with the same list of companies to choose. But in reality, that doesn't happen as number of factors interplace. He says that the future can be approached in two different ways, either by predicting or projecting, which is based on supply, demand, volume, price. And the other way is by protection, which he has covered in detail in chapter 20. According to Graham, predicting is a foolish job, whereas protecting is an intelligent act. In order to value invest, that is to buy at an attractive price, one may use Graham number, which is square root of product of 22.5 times EPS and BVPS as shown in this formula. Just to get an idea about the nature of companies that pass Graham's 7 rules of defensive investing, a list of companies are shown here for US, which has UNF, UFPI, Franklin, Donaldson, just to name a few, which has industrials, consumers, materials, financials and so on. Whereas when we have a look at the list of defensive in companies in India, we have Tata, Seshasai Group, ITC, Wipro, etc. Now to quickly run through Graham's 7 rules for one of the defensive companies, I have just handpicked Stepan Co as it is a materials company. We could see the portal collects all the data about the company estimates and displays both qualitative and quantitative factors. So we could see SEL has met the criteria set by Graham. So as a defensive investor one may consider this as one of the options. And here is a test run of Birla Soft, which is an infotech company in India. It has met the criteria scoring above 100% in annual sales, assets category, earning stability, consistent dividend payments, meaning it has met all the rules and safe to have in a defensive investor's kitty. These days, index funds are aplenty, which apparently holds low, low cost and also fall under passive category with reasonable turnover and importantly containing broad and diversified sectors. And finally, it replicates major stock market indices as well. Some examples of index funds in US are Vanguard 500, the Fidelity 500, Schwab total stock market. Whereas in India, we do have LICMF, HDFC, Nippon, Tata, Franklin, which might be a safe bet. To wrap up this chapter, Graham has devised 7 rules to help a defensive investor choose value stocks. These days there are a number of index funds which might comprise the stocks that have passed Graham's rules and so easy go for it. But if you are an experimenting kind, you may go for 10% of your choice and the rest 90% on index fund. Importantly, don't predict, instead protect, which will be discussed in detail in chapter 20. All you need to do once you pick the right stock is let your patience, discipline and confidence to rule your financial destiny. Since Graham has devoted three chapters, that is 4th, 5th and 14th in and out for defensive investors, I thought of quickly summing up key takeaways for defensive investors. A defensive investor should have 50% each in stocks and bonds with 10 to 30 diversified products in their baskets. Stocks and bonds to meet the criteria set by Graham. Design your basket having index funds, invest periodically and inspect them as well. On the other hand, Graham says a big no to 100% stocks and importantly should avoid having growth stocks, preferred stocks, high yielding bonds for defensive investors. Also, don't predict the future. Instead, do the homework thoroughly today. Thanks for listening. Happy, healthy and intelligent investing. See you in the next video.